This lecture is about the traveling salesman problem, which is a long studied optimization problem in graph theory. Now to give you some idea what this is about, I'm going to give you a made up example. It involves the man who used to be president of Ohio State until very recently, President Gordon Gee. And of course, as president of the university, he was a big booster and salesman. I want to imagine that he wants to make a whirlwind visit to the university's regional campuses. There's a big campus, a gigantic campus in Columbus. There are four smaller regional campuses of the university in Lima, Marion, Mansfield, and Newark. If you happen to know the campus out in Worcester, the agricultural campus, I just want to leave that out of the picture. It'll make the example too complicated. So we're going to suppose that there's Columbus and the four regional campuses. And we're supposing that President Yi wants to make a visit where he starts from Columbus and then he visits in turn each of the four regional campuses all in one trip. And then at the end, he returns home to Columbus. He also wants to keep his mileage to a minimum. Well, the relevant information is shown in this graph that you're looking at over on the right. This is what's called a complete graph. What's a complete graph? Well, in a complete graph, you have a certain number of vertices. It may be whatever you like. In this example, it's five. And here's the rule about putting in the edges. For every pair of distinct vertices, there is a single edge between them. There are no multiple edges and there are no loops. In our example, there were five vertices. It turns out that if there are five vertices in a complete graph, then there must be 10 edges. That is to say, there must be 10 pairs of vertices. And for each one, you're supposed to have an edge. Now you'll notice that in this graph, there's more information. You'll notice, of course, there's a number attached to each edge. And you've probably guessed what those numbers represent. They represent the mileage between the two campuses. So for example, if you look at top left, you'll see the number 54 on the edge connecting Lima and Marion. And that is the mileage between those two campuses. Now in general, a number that it is attached to an edge of a graph is called a weight. That's just the generic term that's used in graph theory. And in an application, it might represent, as it does here, a distance. But it also might represent a cost. It might represent a time required to do some task, and so on. If you have a weight attached to each edge of your graph, then you're going to call it a weighted graph. And thus, in our example, since we have a complete graph and we have a weight on each edge, we'll call that a weighted complete graph. Now notice that what President Yi is looking for here is a Hamilton circuit. He wants to take a trip following a Hamilton circuit. That is to say, he wants to visit each vertex exactly once. I've given you an example of one of the possible trips he might make. And of course, it is a Hamilton circuit. It's the one that's shown in orange at the bottom. Columbus to Marion to Mansfield, to Lima, to Newark, and then back to Columbus. All right, a Hamilton circuit, in other words, a trip involving visiting each one of the vertices representing the campuses. Notice that there are five vertices listed. Columbus, of course, needs to be listed both at the beginning and the end. Now, what is the total weight of this Hamilton circuit? Well, what do you think that should mean? You probably guess what that means. It means, of course, the distance that would have to be traveled in taking this trip. In other words, if you take the edges that are in the Hamilton circuit and add up their weights, that will be the number you want, and it's called the total weight. So let me ask you, take a moment and figure out what is the total weight of the Hamilton circuit that I've given you. Pause the video for a moment, work that out, and then see if we agree. All right, I hope that you found that the total weight 
was 335. In other words, you took the weights of the five edges that were given in this Hamilton circuit, you added up and you got 335. Now that was kind of easy, but here's a harder question. Is this the best Hamilton circuit? And what would I mean by best? Well, of course, the one of least total weight. Well, that's a little bit hard to answer because now we have to think, well, what were the other possibilities? What were the other possible Hamilton circuits? So we're not really sure if this is the best thing to do or not. We're not sure that this is the best Hamilton circuit. In general, the problem that we're looking at here is called the traveling salesman problem. Okay, what is it? Well, first of all, let's say what you're given. What you're given is a complete weighted graph. You're given a complete graph and you're given the weights on the edges. And then the problem is to determine the Hamilton circuit of least total weight. So we're going to be thinking about this problem for quite a while here. Let me give you something that's called an algorithm. Now, in mathematics and computer science, this word algorithm means a precise step-by-step -step process for solving a problem. I don't know if you've heard this word outside of mathematics. It's not used exclusively in math and computer science, but that's where it's used an awful lot. And it's a word that happens to come from Arabic, the AL may give it away. Another math word that comes from Arabic is algebra. And I give you a couple of other examples of words coming from Arabic into English. Um, this word is, is actually coming from the name of a Persian who lived in the 8th and 9th centuries. He was a mathematician, astronomer, and geographer. And according to Wikipedia, the Latin translations of his work introduced the decimal positional number system to the Western world. Not only does the word algorithm come from a Latin form of his name, but the word algebra also happens to come from this person's work. It is derived from the name of one of two operations he used to solve quadratic equations. So that's the general idea of algorithm. Of course, we were talking about this traveling salesman problem. And let me tell you an algorithm for solving it. That is to say, I'm going to tell you a precise step-by-step -step method for solving the traveling salesman problem. Here are the steps. Step one, list all the possible Hamilton circuits. Step two, for each one of these Hamilton circuits, compute its total weight, and then I hope step three seems sort of obvious given what you've already done in step one and step two. At this point, you will have a list of all possible Hamlet circuits together with their total weights. So what you do is you look through your list and you choose the best one. You choose the Hamilton circuit of least total weight. Now, we're actually going to try out this algorithm in recitation. So I'm asking you to do that. And it's going to involve quite a bit of arithmetic so make sure that you bring your calculators. So bring those along, and then you're going to carry out this algorithm for the example that we've seen earlier, the one involving the Ohio State campuses graph.